my brothers and sisters, in the verses that precede our selected scriptural text for today, Jesus has crossed over the lake of Tiberias, also known as the Sea of Galilee. And a great multitude followed him. According to verse 2 of chapter 6, the Bible declares that the multitude followed Jesus because they saw the signs or miracles which Jesus performed upon those who were sick. The Jewish Passover festival was soon approaching. So Jesus went up into a mountain with his disciples for the purpose of getting some rest and to also instruct and prepare his disciples for the work of the ministry that was ahead of them. Verse 5 tells us that Jesus looks up and sees a great multitude of people coming towards him, and he says to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? Now, Fred, I learned in divinity school that when Jesus ask a question it is always a setup verse 6 verifies this truth for the bible says that Jesus asked this only to test Philip for he already had in mind what he was going to do and I don't know about you. I'm so glad this morning that Jesus already knows what he is going to do before any issue occurs. Before any problem shows up, Jesus already knows the solution. Philip says to Jesus, it would take more than a half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. But then the disciple named Andrew, who was Simon Peter's brother, spoke up and said, here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? And let me just pause right here and say to you new providence and friends, that if I ever get into a tight situation, if I ever get into a tight spot, y'all make sure that you send an Andrew to help me out. <laughs> Though Andrew did not know how Jesus was going to work things out, he at least tried to do something to help out. Look, Philip talked a good game, but Andrew walked 
to make something happen. Well, if you are a good Bible reader, you know what happened next. Jesus had the disciples to make the people sit down. And the Bible says in verse 10 that in this multitude, there was about 5,000 men, not including women and children. Jesus took the loaves and fish and blessed them and gave them to the disciples to distribute among the people. The Bible says, when the people had enough to eat and were full, Jesus told his disciples to gather up the fragments or leftovers that nothing may be wasted. When they gathered up the leftovers, there were 12 baskets filled with pieces of the barley bread. Remember, New Providence and friends, these 12 basketfuls were over and above what the people ate. Remember, it started out with five little barley loaves and two fish. Verses 14 and 15 tell us that after the people saw the sign or miracle that Jesus performed, that they said, surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus perceived that the people would come and try to make him a king by force. He left them and went into a mountain alone. And while Jesus was in the mountain alone, the evening was fast approaching. So his disciples decided to enter into a ship and start heading to the other side of the lake to the city Capernaum. As they were crossing, y'all know this, y'all good Bible readers, night fell upon them, accompanied by a great wind that blew. And the disciples saw someone walking on the water towards them and they were afraid but the bible tells us jesus spoke to them be not afraid for it is i jesus enters into the ship and the bible says that immediately the ship was at the place where they were going. When the people that Jesus and his disciples had left on the other side of the lake realized that Jesus was gone, the Bible says they took boats over to the other side looking for Jesus in the city of Capernaum. This brings us up to our scriptural text for today. The Bible says, when they found Jesus on the other side of the lake in Capernaum, the people ask him, Rabbi or teacher, 
when did you get here? <laughs> Why would they ask that, Pastor Wood? Now, the people knew that the disciples had left Jesus on the other side of the lake. They knew that there were no boats left on the other side in which Jesus could embark and travel to the other side of the lake. They knew that the only way that Jesus could have made it to the other side of the lake was by a miracle, a supernatural move of God. Listen to me good. They have just witnessed Jesus perform the miracle of feeding them with five barley loaves and two fish. And now, Fred, they have seen the miracle of the physical presence of Jesus arriving on the other side of the lake without the use of a boat. <laughs> they have witnessed Two miracles. Uh, Jesus answered the people's question. How did you get here, Jesus? Jesus says to them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed. But because you ate the loaves and had your fill. He says to them, do not work for food that spoils. But for food that endures to eternal life which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. In other words, my brothers and sisters, Jesus confronts them about what their real motive is for following him. They were not truly interested in giving themselves over to God and living consecrated lives for him. They were not looking for a relationship with God based upon pure love for him. They were only following Jesus because of the things that he provided for them. And brothers and sisters, can I ask you a question? Why are you following Jesus today. Are you following him just for the stuff that he gives you? Oh, why is it quiet in here? Are you following him only because you need his protection? Why are you following Jesus? In verse 28, the people asked Jesus, look, Jesus, what must we do to do the works God requires? We've just seen these two miracles. We want to do those kind of things too. 
So what must we do to do the works God requires? They asked Jesus this question because they thought that through works they could appease God. They thought that they could exchange works for belief and that if they could work for God and still get God's stuff without really loving God and committing themselves to him then that's what they preferred to do Jesus answers them by saying, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So, they ask him, all right, Jesus, what Miraculous sign then will you give that we may say it and believe in you? Jesus, what will you do to make us believe? Matter of fact, Jesus, our forefathers <laughs> ate the manna in the desert for 40 years. As it is written, he, referring to Moses, gave them bread from heaven to eat. In essence, the people were saying to Jesus, look, Jesus, what you have done is not enough. Oh, yeah, you fed us one good meal, but that ain't enough. <laughs> yeah, you performed some miracles. But that is still not enough for us to believe in you. You know what? The people had embraced their entitlement mindset. Oh, come on. And some of us who are in the sanctuary and some of us who are watching right now, have to check ourselves that we too are not embracing an entitlement mindset with stimulus checks, child care credits. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. It's easy for folk with unemployment benefits it's easy for folk to develop an entitlement mindset where they say to themselves, I might as well live on the system. Okay. All right. Have mercy. Have mercy on me, God. I'm, I'm trying to preach. I said the people embraced the entitlement mindset and they feel that Jesus is obligated to do what they want when they want it in order for him, for them to believe in Jesus. Check out, New Providence and friends, what the people were inferring with their statement. They were saying to Jesus, 
that the feeding of 5,000 men with women and children with two fish and five loaves was nothing compared to what Moses did. <laughs> You're talking about 40 years of bread from heaven versus one meal. Oh, Lord. The people were saying to Jesus, look, Jesus, if you want to impress us, to believe in you, let me tell you what you got to do, Jesus. You got to keep feeding and looking after us and let us continue to see the show of God's power working in you without us making any investment or belief in you. Tell your neighbor the entitlement mindset. You know what else they were inferring? They were saying to Jesus, look Jesus, we don't know how you done it. We don't know how you got from one side of the lake to the other. But just keep on doing supernatural things that we can see, and then eventually we might believe in you. In other words, they were inferring by their statement, Jesus, you have not done enough to impress us to believe in you. Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. It is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who come down from heaven and gives life to the world. <laughs> they say to Jesus, sir, from now on, listen what they say, from now on, Always give us this bread. Then Jesus looks at them and declares, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry. And he who believes in me will never be thirsty. In essence, New Providence and friends, what Jesus was saying to the people is though you may not believe I'm enough, I am all you need. And New Providence and friends, I stopped by New Providence this Sunday morning to let you know that Jesus is all you need. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Jesus is what you need. And as I close 
this sermon this morning, I need to ask a question. What else does Jesus need to do to make you believe in him and give him, him some praise? Let me ask that again. What else does Jesus need to do to make you believe in him and give him praise? Hasn't Jesus already done enough? Come on, new prophets and friends. I asked the question. Hasn't Jesus already done enough? Can I run down a list of stuff that Jesus has already done? He woke you up this morning, kept a roof over your head, kept food for you to eat, Kept clothes on your back, healed you when you were sick, kept you in your right mind, even in all the craziness that's happening around us. He's kept you alive through a pandemic, saved you when you were a sinner died for you while you were lost put you and I back into a right relationship with God the Father hasn't he done enough for you but guess what I'm so glad I'm so glad that he's done one more thing. What has he done, Pastor Wood? He's gone to prepare a place for us. This world is not our home. One glad morning when this life is over. I don't know about you, but I Fly away to be with my Lord, my Savior. I don't know about you, but if Jesus doesn't do anything else for me, he has already done enough for me to trust, believe, and give him praise. Is there anybody in the house who is willing to give God some praise?